If you have a good sound system, get it ready. Get on the TV, crank the volume up. When the music kicks in, it's epic. It's the final cherry on top. I think everyone's gonna love the ride that the show takes you on. Just like seeing a lot of the art come out of the, the design teams and the background artists and, and, and the animators, hearing character themes, hearing intense moments of our story being giving its original score, uh, it's incredible. It's, it, it gives goosebumps instantaneously. You know, it's funny, I didn't really think that I was that familiar with Neil LaCree's music before he signed on to the project, but it turns out I really was. You've heard Neil's music if you've ever played any of the games that he is so well known for. I worked for many years on the Stargate franchise, and then at some point got an opportunity to, to write music for video games, and that meant World of Warcraft, and that led to Starcraft 2 and Diablo 3 and Overwatch eventually. It's great to work with people who are good at their jobs, of course, but it's even more spectacular when you can work with someone whose enthusiasm for your project makes it not your project anymore, it's our project. And he's a true collaborator in that sense that we are making something together. When I first heard about the Kickstarter, I knew right away I had to be involved in some way. It's the kind of project my entire career has been preparing me for. At that moment, I realized I can talk all I want about this, but the only way to really convey my enthusiasm is to do it through music. Unbeknownst to us, Neil, on his own, scored a variation of what he called sort of the critical role theme, bringing in elements from previous versions, but also just building the size of the sound to show what could be possible. I went all in, hired an orchestra, recorded it, sent it to Sam and said, this is just my way of saying thank you for considering me. It hit our inbox and I think I stood in the kitchen with a glass of water and listened to it about 37 times. It was one of the first moments where we really realized what could be possible with how we deliver this show. Neil knows our show. He knew the characters. He knew what the world was like. He knew what the different areas of Exandria were and he was already talking about different themes for different locations. Neil has such an epic grasp of fantasy, but it's also grounded and modern, which is exactly what we need because Legend of Vox Machina is not a period piece. It is not historical. It is a modern fantasy. Matt's vision for the world that these characters run around in is so sweeping and gorgeous and Neil's music meets that. He's made music for in all kinds of different genres, electronic music and classical music. He creates these really unique sounds. We're really lucky to have him on this team. Instead of adapting the RPG, I'm adapting the cinematic influences that they had when they created these moments. I get in front of a keyboard and I start playing along, and it's kind of become this intuitive thing where it's kind of a puzzle. The acting, and the pacing of the scene are clues that'll help get you halfway there, but then finding these threads that will tie the entire season together. I write all my music on keyboard, and that means using computers to trigger sounds. So if I, I play a note on the keyboard, I'll hear a violin sound or a French horn sound or a drum sound, and that allows me to create a mock-up of the music as it's going to be recorded by the orchestra before we even get musicians to record it. I had the chance to bring in some longtime collaborators like Tina Guo. Paul Cartwright is playing fiddle. Kristen Nigus playing woodwinds. The orchestra we're working with is the Budapest Scoring Orchestra in Budapest, Hungary. And for the main title, I brought in bagpipe player Eric Riegler. He played on Titanic and Braveheart. The one thing I knew starting out is that your turn to roll theme had to be a presence in the score. The adventure begins, they were always 
place beside you. Your new Both as a fan of it myself, and, and I knew it's something that the fans would want to hear. Your Turn to Roll is really the song that we have built most of the second campaign around. But there are elements of it now that are just associated with Critical Role as a brand. So we wanted to implement that, if we could, in a smart way that would make fans of the show smile. He's taken some elements of the Critical Role theme song and shifted and adapted and rearranged it so that it fits into the world of the legend of Vox Machina. In moments of action, humor, sadness, Neil will brilliantly weave these notes from that song in. If you are a music nerd, you're gonna catch a lot of wonderful little nods. It's there as much as I can get it in. I've tried to do my best to, to build upon that and take it into new adventures. This isn't just your, your, your mom and dad's fantasy series. It's not all one musical genre. We're bringing in a much wider breadth of musical influences that makes it way more interesting in my mind than just sticking to one genre. The characters of Vox Machina have such clearly defined personalities, and I've tried to find ways to connect musically with those. To me, Grog is heavy metal. Pike and Keyleth, I've approached both with a similar kind of flute and choir. Percy, a little bit of a classical operatic approach. Vax and Vex have this gracefulness to them, so I've been handling that with strings playing this kind of classical waltz. I remember when I first started working on the show, I was trying to find the voice and kind of define some parameters. And then at one point, Sam asked me to write a heavy metal piece where Scanlan's playing the lute and it turns into a heavy metal guitar. And I'm like, all the rules are out there. Scanlan really opened up the musical Pandora's box with the songs that, that Sam and Peter wrote. Scanlon's music serves all kinds of different purposes. In a practical sense, his singing and music activates his magical powers. But the, the main point of the Scanlon songs, for me anyway, is just to make people laugh. It was very important to us in the beginning that The Legend of Vox Machina have the balance between emotional moments and comedic moments. If it was just sweeping music and beautiful vistas, it wouldn't be us. We're a bunch of dumb fucks. So Sam, Sam grounds us in reality that way. Boy, Sam in reality. That's a comparison I've never made before. In the campaign, I used to spoof top 40 hits from the radio, but for the series, we decided to make Scanlon's music completely original. And so uh, me, along with my brother-in-law, Peter Habib, have composed a brand new set of Scanlon originals. There's a lot of personality with this character. He's got his own voice, so we've got to use that voice to further along the plot and to entertain. The dynamic between Sam and Peter is amazing, and the result has been nothing short of spectacular. They're short little songs that are just really well written and are funny. We keep laughing because not only is it hilarious, but it makes sense and it fits and it elevates the narrative. While most of them will make you laugh, they're also a jam. They have no right to be so good. You want them to be stupid because of Scanlan, but they're so catchy. Every time a new one gets shared, my heart, like the Grinch, grows two or three sizes. It's been liberating to be able to work on a show where it exists in this fantasy world. It leads you down a lot of paths that you might not have ordinarily taken. The songs of Scanlan Shorthalt definitely bring to life facets of that that odd combination of, of classic fantasy and modern slapdickery. I have no other way to really explain it. Through the course of Sam and I writing these, these wild songs, I've gotten a lot of insight into what a dirty birdie he is. My toe is going in and out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Gonna make you twist and shout. Oh, yeah, that, that rhymes that, that, and it's dirty. <laughs> I knew they were going to be extra, but they've gone super, super extra. Possibly one of the big reasons why this is going to be a very adult cartoon. <laughs> we touched on a lot of different musical styles and genres. Everything from a little bit of a hip hop edge to a funk and a soul edge to a country kind of style. There are absurd songs and there are heartfelt songs. It's magic. The creative outlets are 
flooded completely open with this show. In my career, I've had the chance to work on a lot of very beloved franchises. So I understand what it means to take the story and to try to deliver the best I can to help bring it to the fans, to bring it to a new audience. And I just want to make this the best it can be. Folks, we've given a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into the last couple years of music that we've generated for this show. My hope is that it brings the world that you guys know so well to another level. To get to contribute to this, to be a part of this story, is a huge honor, and I hope that everyone enjoys the show as much as we've all enjoyed working on it.